I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. This is Umarami for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're at Punch's Chance, a quiz set out by Matrim today. I can't reveal actually what happened, Joe, because obviously Matrim have got to release the full video and the result, but had good fun today, Joe? Yeah, I did. It was the bollocks, mate. Um, <laughs> yeah, I probably enjoyed it. How was your time uh, in Qatar watching the World Cup? Obviously not great for Wales. Well, no, to be honest, it was unbelievable, but yeah, going at the, my team, Wales, we didn't really perform at our best. Um, I think... We rely on Gareth Bale and, and Ramsey a lot. I think their time is coming to an end. So, um, yeah, it was a bit, a bit of a bit sweet moment for me. Yeah, we got to the World Cup in first time in 60 odd years, but we went out in the group stages. So, yeah, it was a bit of a shit, shit one for me, really. Were you happy seeing France uh, knock out England? To be honest, no, I wasn't. No, because no, obviously I spent most of my time in England, so. I'll, I'll back them, do you get me? And they're a home nation, so um, yeah, I was a bit pissed off with that as well. That's fair enough. I don't think uh, the majority of, of Welsh people or the other nations take that view, so fair play, Joe. Joe, I noticed on your Snapchat you said uh, when you were out there you asked uh, a few players in the World Cup for, uh, for photos. Um, and what, all of them said no, Joe? Yeah, well, I asked. The first one killed me. It was um, Iniesta. So, yeah, that hurt me, that is. I grew up watching him and he was one of my favourite players. So, yeah, that hurt me bad. And then the next one was... Um, well, Iniesta didn't even look at me. It was his agent that would just, like, put his hand, like, sort of towards my feet. I was like, mate, if we won in this place, I'd just knock you spark out. But, um, yeah, and then the second one, uh, the, the next one was uh, Modric and Kovacic. They're walking around a mall as if no one's going to recognise them with hats on. It was Ram out in there as well. So I've gone into the shop, into the perfume shop, and I've just looked. They were just staying in the corner, so I've looked. Seen, I seen Modric, and I thought, I'll, I'll go over and ask him. I've gone over. I was like, oh, mate, any chance of a quick photo? And he was like, oh, no, no, later. As if I'm going to fucking see you later. It's not, it's not going to happen. But what I should have done is went outside and just told everyone, everyone, Modric and Kovacic is in here, and just let everyone swarm him. But I didn't even... I didn't make it blatant. It was, I just asked them quietly, and they said no. So you know the funniest thing about that is, if Iniesta, Modric, or Kovacic there um, realised who you were, you, they probably because you could you could knock them out each with one punch. So they'd probably jump at the thing. But um, did you not feel like sticking it on one of them afterwards? Um, the the yeah the main one was um, was Modric and Kovacic because I, it looked like Kovacic wanted to, but then Modric was like sort of nah, so he couldn't really go against him, but. And it, it, not so much Iniesta because he, he wasn't even looking at me. It was his agent. So, yeah. Um, but, like, maybe I, what I should have done is maybe got, like, my phone out and, and just... But I don't like using that one, do you get me? But it is what it is. It's a show the Ogawa knockout. Uh, Joe, in terms of uh, your career, I mean, it's been heavily reported that April you're looking at a fight with Rakimov. So is that what we're targeting? April, yeah, I've, I've heard it towards the end of April. Um, I spoke to Tony yesterday and he mentioned around about the end of April. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that date. And, um, yeah, I'll be working towards it. I can start punching on my hand now, which is perfectly, um, perfect for me. Then this next couple of weeks and then into the new year, I'll start picking it up then. Um, I get back up to Essex and start, start my camp. Because I, I want a long camp for this one because um, I probably want to put it on him. I know you uh, bumped into Rakamov. Where was it, Abu Dhabi? Um, what did you make of him? Did you size him up? Yeah, he's not as big as I thought. Don't get me wrong, he's thick set and whatever, but size-wise, I've, I've sparred, I've boxed bigger bigger fighters than him, and um, strength-wise as well. Yeah, he can, obviously he's strong, physically strong, and clearly he can punch as well. But at the same time, like I said, I've boxed and sparred bigger and harder punches than him. I've sparred uh, Connor, I've sparred Adam Azim, for instance, and he's a very good fighter. I've sparred Robbie Davis, who's a big or light welter, um, and physically strong. So for me, it's not a, it's not a problem. Um, I just want to get in there and clearly, in front of my my home home supporters, boxes head clean off. So that's my plan. Well, 
if you beat Rakimov, in your opinion, when you beat Rakimov in April, hopefully if that fight gets over the line, um, has it got to be you and Shakur Stevenson next? That is the mega fight. Yeah, I, that's what I want. And this is three times funny enough. I messaged, I, I tweeted him this morning, saying someone put like he put sorry, three three fighters have turned down fights in this than the other. Um, but like twice he called me out over socials, and then someone sent me a um, couple of weeks after my fight. Someone sent me a, uh, a, um, a radio interview we done. So I was listening to that and he's basically saying that the only come to the UK for Joe, um, it's still a big fight and we could do it a catchweight. So that's perfect. I, and I tweet, that's why I tweeted him this morning. I said, let me win my title back. So I got a bit of clout about me. And then, um, and then I said in the summer, we can do a big outdoor one, maybe the Cardiff City Stadium. And, Hopefully, there was no. I didn't like trash talk him and bad talk him and all that stuff because, like, clearly it's not my style and I just let my boxer do the talking. But at the same time, it's a fight where he called me out. It's a fight that I won because if that happens on 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 the street or whatever, I'm, whether he's six foot or or four foot, do you get me? Um, and they called me out and and they wanted a, a straightener. I'm not gonna let that slide. So yeah, I, I want to fight him clearly for the, the reason he called me on. Joe, just lastly, if you manage to sell out a stadium in the summer with Shackle Stevenson and beat Shackle Stevenson, arguably one of the, the biggest talents in world boxing, surely Eddie's got to put a Rolex on your wrist. Yeah, well, when I win my world title back, I'm, I'm hoping, well, I've seen the interview, he said, I'll, I'll probably get him one. But um, considering I really and truly I should have got one after my first world title since I started with him and uh, he took me to a world title, he should have got me, he got me one. Um, I want an upgraded one now. So not, not after. A sky, not a not well, I want to protect. <laughs> <laughs> I want to protect. So tell him that one. Joe Cordina, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. Have a great Christmas, and uh, hopefully we'll speak early in the new year. All right, top man. Oh, man. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.